In the early years of the 1800s, the streets of American cities were illuminated with gas lamps. Unfortunately, gas lamps didn't produce much in terms of actual illumination, and there were also rumors among dwellers that gas lamps caused blisters. So, the mayors of the cities, fearing such blisters, began to focus on the necessity of quality for street lighting. Around the early 19th century, the English inventor Humphrey Davy, who could be considered the founder of electric lighting, discovered that if you bring two charcoal rods close enough together, whilst a current is flowing, it would produce a dazzling white light which arises between them. The power of that glowing glint was equal to 3 kilowatts. Humphrey Davy had inadvertently created a prototype of a single electric lamp. This simple design was flawed due to the heating of the electric arcs, which caused the carbon rods to slowly burn away, and as a result, it was necessary to maintain a constant distance between them. By the end of 1870, the problem with automatic regulation of carbon electrodes was finally solved, and the first arc lamps, with a power ranging from 1 to 4.5 kilowatts, appeared on the scene. In 1882, Thomas Edison opened the first commercial central power plant in New York. This was the dawn of the electrical lighting era. In the American cities, people were delighted with this innovation and couldn't wait to replace their old gas systems. On the 11th of September, 1882, Los Angeles City Council entered into a contract with the California Electric Light Company to illuminate city streets with electric lighting. At first, the light emitted from arc lamps was too intense to be endured at short distances. Therefore, California Electric Light Company supplied Los Angeles with seven electric masts of 50 meters each. Each electric mast had three light bulbs with a power of 3 kilowatts. The masts were intended to be located in the heart of the city and its surrounding areas. On the 30th of December, 1882, before a crowd of admiring spectators, the mayor of Doberman turned on the lamps for two of the masts. The Express newspaper described these events as the light of the main street was permanently lit and sparkled beautifully like the brightness of the full moon shimmering on snowy surfaces. But these enormous floodlights in Los Angeles weren't even the tallest to be found with some American cities constructing masts of up to 90 meters high. Researchers found it to be an interesting history, which seemed on the surface to be correct, but there were some small discrepancies to discuss. The emission time of the arc lamps was estimated to be around one hour before the carbon rods completely burnt away. This meant they had to be regularly replaced, a simple job requiring a worker to insert two new charcoal rods. The only issue would have been the height of the poles. As mentioned before, ranging from 50 meters in cities such as Los Angeles, up to 90 meters across other cities in America. For comparison, modern lampposts are usually between 5 and 12 meters in height. This daunting climb to replace the rods would have been required every hour from dusk till dawn. How this was completed, researchers aren't exactly sure. However, one thing is very clear. In the final years of the 1800s, American cities had access to large, powerful, arc-based lighting. Some of you may have seen our video about high-society Russian balls. If you haven't, you can catch up with our theory on these historic balls by going down and hitting the link in the description. Researchers have suggested multiple arguments which imply these balls might have a history which hasn't been fully explored. It's said that in the late 1800s, no photographic evidence of these seemingly integral societal events was able to be recorded due to the lack of quality photographic equipment at the time. The rooms had to be dark for the events and it was seemingly impossible to take a photograph in such conditions. As for the capabilities of cameras in the 1800s, we've created a video about San Francisco. The link for that will also be in the description. During the video, we show a panoramic view of the city made at the end of the 1800s. This photo is an excellent example of the capabilities and quality that was available during the same period that we're discussing now. 
In St. Petersburg, the first electric lamp appeared in 1879 on the bridge of Alexander II. Within four years, electric lighting appeared on Nevsky Prospect, one of the main streets in the city. This means that in 1883, permanent electric lighting had already appeared in the former Russian capital. This would raise a very important question. Why had electric lighting not been used to improve the quality of indoor photography? A seemingly simple prospect. If they'd wanted to capture and record such important events as these high society dance-offs, photographers would have simply needed to strategically place a few arc lights in the room, directing their light onto a wall or ceiling. This would hypothetically provide excellent lighting for the photography of any indoor event. There should have been no obstacles to completing this task. In 1883, St. Petersburg had already built an electric power plant that lit up the street of Nevsky Prospect. So why hadn't the government employed and high society funded photographers used these lights? Surely the celebrities and rulers of this era would have appreciated the ability to document such lavish and narcissistic events. Perhaps the official photographers were unaware of such techniques available to them via the use of electric lighting. Let's check the biography of the imperial photographer Sergei Levitsky. In the mid-1800s, Sergei was one of the first photographers in the world to experiment with electric lighting in his photography. He also tested Yablokov's lamp, known as the electric candle, and participated in preparation of specialized carbon rods for use in portrait photography. In 1878, Levitsky was one of the organizers of the Russian Technical Society. During this period, he conducted even more experiments shooting with electricity. It turns out, by the end of the 1800s, there were practically no technical barriers to photographing these indoor high society events. St. Petersburg power plant helped in creating powerful arc lamps, and most importantly, the imperial photographer himself used electric lighting for his photography studio. So why are there still no pictures of these historically important events? Researchers believe there is enough evidence to suggest they had the technical capabilities. And that just leaves the question of why they didn't. Maybe they did, and for whatever reason, the photographic evidence of these events has mysteriously vanished. Or, as some Russian historians have suggested, perhaps these events never even happened at all.